Hey, my name is Kara. I'm an ultrasound tech, and let's talk today about what a fetal pericardial effusion is. And before we get started with the video, I do want to go ahead and direct you guys to my new group for mums. Go ahead and check out that link in my bio to become a part of it. If you have any questions or anything you want looked at via ultrasound pictures, either myself or one of the other members can definitely take a look or at least answer your questions in that group. So go ahead and check that out. Anyways, let's get back to fetal pericardial effusions. So the difference between a pericardial effusion versus a pleural effusion is definitely important to understand. When we're talking about a pericardial effusion, that is actually talking about fluid that is around the heart, as opposed to with a pleural effusion, that is when fluid is around the lungs. So today we are going to be talking about a pericardial effusion, so the fluid around the heart. Now, in order to understand this a little bit better as well, we should also talk about what the pericardium is. So the pericardium is just a sac that is enclosing the fetal heart as well as, I guess, our hearts too, but basically just the area around the heart. It is encasing the heart and it acts as almost just like a protectant for the heart. And sometimes we do get fluid that accumulates in that area. These images are just showing a cross section of the fetal chest and you can see the heart within the fetal chest here. Just wanted to point out that this is the heart here. We can see all four chambers. So these are going to be ventricles on this side. There's one right here as well as one on the other side. And these are the atria. So there's one on this side and then the other side to make up the four chambers of the heart that we are seeing. I also wanted to note that this heart that we are looking at in the fetal chest is enlarged. So it should not be encompassing this much of the chest. It should only be taking up about a third of the fetal chest. And you can see here that this one is taking up a lot more of that. Anyways, back to fluid around the heart. So if you look at this area right here, so kind of that dark space right beside the heart there, that is what we call a pericardial effusion. That is going to be fluid that is accumulating around the heart. In this picture here, as well as like the same one that's just showed over there, we can see that this amount of fluid is just accumulating around this area here in the heart, but it can also encompass all around the heart. What we are going to be doing when we see this on ultrasound is measuring the fluid basically from one end to the other. And if it is less than two millimeters, then that is not something that we are going to worry about and we don't even call it abnormal. Anything from two to four millimeters though, we are going to call it mild. And then anything four millimeters onward is going to be considered a moderate to severe amount of pericardial fluid. And if we look at this cross section of the fetal chest, we can see that not only is there pericardial fluid over here, so basically again, just that dark area right there beside the heart, there is also some on the other side of the heart. So again, we're kind of looking at this little slip of fluid over here, this dark area right beside the heart. And just as a little bit of a refresher, anything dark or anechoic like this on ultrasound is going to indicate that it is fluid filled. So similar to the fact that you can see the heart is very dark because it is filled with fluid, the blood, obviously, in the chambers of the heart. Versus when you look at the fetal chest as well as all these other surrounding structures, they are more shades of gray. So that means that they are made of tissue. So we can distinguish that this fluid here is actually fluid because it is anechoic or without echoes or just really black. And that's how it shows up on ultrasound. And therefore we know that it is fluid. So we actually see pericardial effusions in about 2% of pregnancies, and the cause of a pericardial effusion can be definitely varied. So the most important thing when we see one of these pericardial effusions is to figure out exactly what the cause is and to see if there actually even is an underlying cause. One of the big things that we want to check for is hydrops fetalis or hydrops, and that is where there is fluid accumulating in two or more compartments on baby. And this is something that can be really dangerous to baby. And having a pericardial effusion is actually one of the more common first signs of high drops. I do have a video on high drops as well, so check that out if you want more info. But another thing that a pericardial effusion can indicate is that baby has a chromosomal abnormality. So one of the most common ones that we can think of is trisomy 21 or Down syndrome. So when a pericardial effusion is seen that is significant, we do want to also check and see if there are any other features for chromosomal abnormalities. And also your doctor may recommend having genetic screening or genetic testing if you have not done that already. Pericardial effusions, especially when they are large, can also be associated with congenital heart defects and also cardiac tumors as well. 
there is also an increased incidence of baby having cardiac arrhythmias, which means that the rhythm of the heart is irregular. And again, these are all associated with pericardial effusions, which is why it is super important when we see a pericardial effusion that we try and look further, do further testing, etc., to go ahead and determine the cause of the pericardial effusion. If there is nothing else found and the only abnormal thing that we see on baby is a pericardial effusion, we do call this just an isolated finding. And in most of these cases, it ends up being idiopathic as in Again, we can't really find the reason of it, so that means it's idiopathic. And also, it doesn't cause any harm to baby, and about 45% of cases, so almost half of these cases, do just resolve on their own by the time that baby is born. And as a last little note, there isn't anything that you can really do if your baby has a pericardial effusion. It's not like they'll go in surgically to go ahead and just drain any sort of fluid that is around the heart, especially if it is an isolated incident. And also if it's under seven millimeters, but the biggest thing that your doctor is probably going to recommend is further testing if they suspect something more underlying like chromosomal abnormalities, etc. But if that is, again, the only finding, then usually it's not really something that your doctors worry about, but you may get a few extra scans in the third trimester just to make sure that the fluid isn't increasing or to see if it has actually gone away on its own. 